Hi folks, I'm Arun. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Apache Hadoop in MapReduce today. Hope you guys will find, the, find it useful and interesting. Uh, Apache Hadoop is a software framework for both storing and processing data using commodity hardware at very massive scale. Right? Apache Hadoop consists of two major components, HDFS and MapReduce. HDFS is the file system and MapReduce is the data processing part. Um, you learned about Hadoop uh, HDFS in uh, previous videos from Hardworks, and I'll spend more time talking about MapReduce today. Now, um, as we talk about Apache Hadoop, it's important to remember that both the file system and the processing, and processing system, which is MapReduce, are co-designed, co-developed, and more importantly, they're actually co-deployed. What it means is you have a single set of servers or machines on which you deploy both HDFS and MapReduce, and you don't have a separate storage network and a separate um, uh, processing network, right? So now one of the really important aspects of MapReduce, which makes it um, very, very you know, efficient and performant, is the fact that MapReduce is really good at moving compute to the data and not the other way around. As you talk about in our distributed systems, it's the, the majority of the cost comes in, in a, you know, majority of the cost comes in moving data from one place to another. And MapReduce, by working very closely with HDFS, really knows about where the data is placed, right? Now, to recap a little bit about HDFS, HDFS is, you know, very large blocks. Typically, there are 64 megabytes or 128 megabytes or, you know, even 256 megabytes, depending on how large your data sets are. HDFS will take every block and replicate it multiple times for fault tolerance, so that you know losing one node or one rack will not harm you, right? Now, what MapReduce does is it's aware of the fact that your input data is replicated, and the same data is available on multiple nodes, right? So MapReduce then tries really hard, and it's actually very efficient, actually moving the compute or your task to the data node on which your uh, data is actually located. So you actually, the job tracker will actually move it to the task tracker, and the task tracker will run it for you, right? So the job tracker and the task tracker form the two, uh, the two major components of MapReduce. Job tracker is the master. Um, he, made, he does two important aspects. He actually does um, resource management. He knows which task trackers are up, which are down, which are having trouble, which task trackers have free resources to run tasks, and so on and so forth. And he also does job lifecycle management in which that in the sense that he knows how many maps are done where where to schedule them uh, whether you know they failed how to deal with failures and all of that so he does two important aspects the task tracker is actually you know the slave he gets directions from the job tracker to actually run the task which he starts and um, and runs to completion monitors them reports back failures and so on so it's actually overall there it's a fairly simple system um, and the job tracker, like I said, is really good at scheduling. It will try and schedule your tasks on the task trackers, which are co-located on the data nodes, which have the data, which, which is why you get the move compute to the data paradigm. So, so far, we've talked about the MapReduce framework, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about MapReduce, the application, or MapReduce, the paradigm. In MapReduce applications, you have two main phases. Um, every job has two main phases. The first phase is the map phase, which is you know, the massively parallel, you know, kind of embarrassingly parallel phase, where your input data is broken down into chunks, and your maps all run independently and in parallel and process your input data. At the end of this phase, you have you know, a set of uh, outputs from the maps. Then there's an aggregation phase, which is reduce. The framework will take the output of the maps, sort it, and send it down to the reducers. And in the reducers, you can take the aggregated view of your input, depending on you know, whatever criteria you've chosen as the application writer, and, and do another processing or post-processing after the aggregation phase. So essentially, there are the two main phases, or the two, the two phases in MapReduce. Also, it's, all, it's important to keep in mind that MapReduce always thinks of your data, which, whether it's input or output, as consisting of keys and values. So your maps will take input keys and input values. They will process them. They will emit, typically emit an intermediate key and an intermediate value. Now, once they're aggregated, they're sent to the reducer and aggregated. Uh, there, the reducer can take the in intermediate keys and values and actually produce a third kind, which is the output keys and the values. So that's essentially how it works. Now, if you look, if you look at the a pictorial diagram of it, you have the input phase, the map phase, 
a shuffle in sort where which is where your aggregation is happening, followed by the reduce in the output phase. Now, if you want to, if you're a Unix geek like me, the analogy in Unix would be cat, grep, you know, sort, unique, and output. So your map phase consists of the input phase, which is a cat. The map is the, you know, let's say you're trying to find something, which is a grep. The shuffle and sort phase in MapReduce is essentially the sort in, in Unix. And then you have an aggregation, which is happening in the reduce, you know, and the example would be unique, for example, right? So, you know, you can think of this as a, as a large distributed pipeline for doing, you know, cat, grep, sort, unique, and output on, you know, thousands of commodity servers. All right, so now, now that you, you know, have a little bit of idea about MapReduce, the, the framework and the paradigm, let's, let's take a real use case, a real world example, and hopefully uh, show you guys how MapReduce can help, right? So let's say you are, you know, let's say you're a bank and you have a set of, um, or a portal, and you have a set of uh, different categories on your website, right? You have category like news, auto loan, home loan, accounts, and so on. And you've deployed this on you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of web servers. You have users coming there every day, uh, going to different parts of your uh, website. Now, at the end of the day, you want to know, for a given user, what are the different um, parts of the website he's visited. So for example, you know, your, your web server logs will tell you that slash bank news had visits from Joe, Sue, Carlos. Your, um, your web server logs will also tell you that you know, the account section was visited by Rahul and Carlos and so on. Right? And you now want to figure out which are the different ones they said. So if you, if you take it to the MapReduce paradigm, right? so you can think of your inputs as your web logs. The simplified version of it is you have your key, which is the URL and your cookie or the username, which is the value. Now, with the MapReduce application, the way you would process it is in your map phase, you take your input keys and values and just flip them around, right? So your keys become the values and vice versa. And those become your intermediate values. Now, they will get aggregated by your intermediate keys, which is why when you go to the reduce phase, you will see that your keys are now Joe, which is the username, and the values are bank news, auto loan, and for Sue it's bank news account and so on, which are the URLs that visited. So if you just take the output now, you automatically know which parts of your site have been visited by which user, right? So to go back to the MapReduce um, you know, data flow paradigm, the data flow um, slide we saw, this is how it look, your application would look like to MapReduce, right? So your input has you know, the URL and the username as the key and values. Your map will just flip them around, make them make it um, uh, make it the username is the key and the URL is the value. And once they get sorted by the username, which is Joe or Rahul, the reducers will see the username followed by a list of URLs they visited. Right. As a result, your application is actually very very straightforward. I mean, you're essentially at the end of the day just flipping keys and values. All the hard work is actually done by the MapReduce framework for you. The heavy lifting is done for you. Right. The MapReduce framework will schedule your maps, schedule your reducers, um, uh, take the, do the aggregation, which is essentially a large distributed sort, and feed it to your reducers. And the reducers have just to output it to the file system or wherever you choose, the, choose for them to go. Right? So essentially, you as the user are doing very little work. Um, and you get a lot of value out of the MapReduce system because it actually does all the heavy lifting for you. So, so far, we talked about how your MapReduce application would work. Now, coming back to how we would actually implement it for Apache, Hadoop, and MapReduce, what you need to, use, to do as the user is actually very simple. You have to define, you have to tell the framework what your inputs are, right? So essentially, in most cases, there are you know, a set of directories on HDFS, for example. You also have to define a very simple map function, right? The map function um, gets, you know, the map function always gets a single key and a single value, and you as the user have to decide how you want to process it. In the previous example, you would just take the key, the value, and just you know, emit them as value and the key. right? So you just flip them around. And then you'd also have to define the reduce function. Now in the reduce function, you get the key, which you saw, as you saw previously, the username, and a set of values, which is the aggregation of all the values for that key. And you as the user can decide what you want to do with that at that point. Also, you want to define an output, which is typically the output for directory in HDFS where you want the output to go. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, a little bit more about why you would use Apache Hadoop and why you'd use Apache Hadoop MapReduce, right? Um, so one of the really cool things about MapReduce is that it scales 
from you know megabytes to all the way up to you know multiple petabytes, you know tens or hundreds of petabytes of data. Right? HDFS can store all that data for you, you know hundreds of petabytes, and MapReduce can actually process that. And you as the user don't have to worry about writing different kinds of applications at different you know, ends of the spectrum, whether it's megabytes or terabytes or petabytes. The same MapReduce application will work because the MapReduce framework can scale all the way from you know, you know, a couple of nodes to you know, four or 5,000 node clusters. Right? Uh, one of the other important parts is that MapReduce framework takes care of um, failures for you, which is because it's got built-in recovery. The job tracker will restart your maps or reduce if they failed for whatever reason, whether it's hardware, software, um, you know, network, you know, lots of things, right? So as a, as, that, as a result, you can, you can focus ex completely on the business logic and de deriving value from the data you have. And you don't have to worry about, you know, resource management, deployment, monitoring, scheduling, fault tolerance, any of that. And as a result, you're much more productive and, you know, and you can focus on, on, the, on the task at hand and not the mundane details. And as a result, um, you know, get great value out of the data. So hopefully this was useful. You guys enjoyed it. Uh, keep coming back to Hortonworks for more instructional material on Apache Hadoop and Hadoop MapReduce. Um, thanks.